Welcome, welcome to UFO Headline News with me, Heidi Hollis. Today is Tuesday, January 2nd, 2018. Starting off this new year right, aren't we? I hope so. Blasting off with some UFO reports. A UFO sighting in Las Vegas, Nevada. This occurred July 31st of 2017. In brief, the witness states, took pick with cell, then flipped cell sideways and snapped second pick a few seconds after the first one. In more detail, they state, my boyfriend and I enjoy doing outdoor stuff on our weekends and we're trying out an easy trail from Las Vegas to Pioneer Saloon in Good Springs, Nevada via Potosi Pass. Forest Service Road number 582. It's 30 miles and about a three-hour trip through amazingly beautiful terrain, mostly along a bunch of power lines. We were somewhere in the first third of the trail and we weren't too, too far past the last house and the Boy Scout campgrounds when I saw this awesome cloud formation that looked like a phoenix flying and asked to stop for a photo opportunity. I believe, thinking back, that we had just gotten through this really cool crook in the road that had a tiny canyon feel to it. It really wasn't much more than a few little crooks in the road. I snapped a picture with my cell phone upright and then turned my cell on its side to get the second shot lengthwise. Much farther down the trail, I noticed the three circles, but we were really didn't have the time to investigate it further, way past that spot by then, until I downloaded them to my PC for a better look. The second picture was taken just a few seconds from the first, both through the opened window. Just got the truck's windows tinted a few weeks prior, so I know the window was down. First picture is normal, and the second picture held a very unique circular cloud configuration directly under the, quote, phoenix. After noticing the circles, I took lots of pictures of the scenery and clouds. I have some weird spots in the clouds in a lot of them, but nothing like this. I showed the phoenix pictures to my boyfriend, and he nor I has ever seen anything like this before. He's a witness to the short duration it took to snap the two picks. He wanted to keep moving because we planned to go to Pioneer Saloon and be off the trail before dark. We got into Good Springs between 6 and 7 p.m. personally. It looks like a portal. Okay. (laughs) The next UFO sighting occurred in Horton, Michigan. This occurred September 1st, 2017. In brief, they call it a strange metallic type orb seen crossing road in headlights of car. Oh. Was driving car on Mosherville Road near Stone Company Gravel Company. Heading west and a strange metallic orb, a small crossed road in my headlights. Was about 30 to 50 feet away, about 5 feet above ground. Straight path and went directly over road and entered gravel pit property. Only reason I observed it was headlights reflected off its surface. Observed same type of orb on same road, November 2017. Oh, they're following you. (laughs) Near same location. Don't know what these orbs are, but were only seen briefly and only because headlights were shining on it directly. Both times heading south directly over gravel pit property. Reported this in case anyone else reports similar orbs in the area. (laughs) The next UFO sighting. Black Triangle sighting in Boise, Idaho. This is a UFO blast from the past, everybody. This happened June 6, 1994. In brief, they call it, uh, they are a veteran experienced with all kinds of aircraft. Never seen this large of a aircraft fly that made no sound other than a buzz. I could see gigantic coils and compartments on the back of the aircraft as it flew over. In detail, they say, I would describe this aircraft to be flying around 2,500 to 4,000 feet off the ground, heading northeast, visually seeing compartments that were attached to the outside of this triangular-shaped vehicle, making nothing 
but a buzz and feeling of static electricity on top of my head. This happened around 1994 when I was outside at 3.30 in the morning having a cigarette break coming back from Desert Storm. This craft had three distinct sides as in a triangle. I have to say on a personal note, this was not made on our planet. I know stealth being in the military. I know how it works. We do not have anything 300 to 600 feet in diameter as 40 feet tall with compartments hanging off the back of it on the sides of it with marker lights that are in the shape of a triangle. Our planes markers are on the tips of the aircraft. The colors appear to be white and amber on the marker lights. Mm. Okay. The next UFO sighting. Whoa, we got another UFO blast from the past. UFO landing. Ooh, and God help me in pronouncing these names. Elblag Varnium Massarium Vodaship. Mm. This occurred <laughs> June 8th, 1991. In brief, they say small object, object pulsated lights. In more detail, I'm sleep in forest, something wake up me at night. Okay, and this is a Google translated thing, I think. I would like going to, okay, P. <laughs> and then so. Somebody illuminated eyes. First, I think it's animal. Then it came to me that around me is very quiet. No noise of trees. The sound of my walk is completely silent. When I tried to slowly withdraw, two figures. They caught me from behind at the height of the elbows. Then white blue light appeared. Steel fossils of fear. Hmm. I was put in the middle of the vehicle. They stoned me in the middle when they called the rest outside. Okay. Only the red light was burning. They closed the door. We quickly got to the top. I felt that they were floating up quickly. The ship which we flew into a much larger ship were in the middle of other ships. And from that time, I remember only at random what happened to me. I remember the woman in the glazed hall next to where they hooked her some kind of tube. The woman started to grow a belly and after three to five minutes, they took the birth. Oh, wow. I remember the woman's horror and fear in her eyes. There were constant two figures like on the ship and someone who called himself the doctor was higher than them. He also had a few hairs on his head. When I laid on the table, I talked with them in my language, but they were very tired. We started talking telepathically. They say honestly, I do not remember what I spoke to them. They did terrible things to me. They stuck needles in the eye. They took sperm. They stuck the needle in my head and a lot of other things. I was with them for four days in different places. I was also on the ground. I remember a tall glass building. I remember the elevator ride to the top. I remember that there were two strangers in the elevator was a man in uniform with some stripe on the front pocket and left sleeve. He looked at me with pity and anger at them. When we drove up, I could see through the huge glass windows of the roofs of houses, streets lit by lanterns. I wanted to see someone, but the streets were empty. We entered a large room where there were a lot of smaller rooms separated by screens. There were about 20 patients under cover. Some people looked like their doctors. I do not remember what they were doing to me or what was next. The last thing I remember is how they pierced me with a thick tube in my nose. I remember the crunch of a bone. With the same ship I returned to the ground. They opened the door and I could go out for me some 10 kilometers farther than they took me. When I was standing in the door I was wondering where I was and what is the year. When I left I saw only one figure in the door. I was on the sidewalk after 10 meters. I heard a voice that screamed, stop. I did not respond. Start calling me my name and surname. Two gentlemen approached me. They walked very strangely as if they had no knees. Voices as if it came from a metal belly. Though they moved their mouths, I saw their black car. A lot of chromium invisible, but could be a brand. Okay. 
I thought for the first time they ordered me to forget everything, that I would not tell anyone about it because otherwise my family would be taken care of. Then I saw on my hand a glowing stamp with different colors that disappeared after five minutes. When they left me, I started to run to my sister's house. I was cruising when I ran into her home. I started drinking water with liters. When my sister saw me, I was very scared. I was confused with the poster I tried to hide. Very scared of my eyes. She said that they were very magnified and I looked like a madman. She kicked me out of the house. Oh, wow. I did not say anything about what had happened to me 10 years ago. I told my wife 17 years ago. The x-ray a doctor of my head found something like a half grain of rice. That's what I wanted to tell you. I apologize for writing. I use an online translator. <laughs> I called it. I knew it. Sounded like a Google translator. Wow, I don't know what this country is. Varmium Marsumium Voidaship. Hmm. Elblag. E-L-B-L-A-G. Just so you know. 1991. Horrific. Four days. Four days. And our governments don't care? Thousands of people report this stuff. Our governments don't care to look into abductions? Now they disclose some things? Oh, you guys. They have done us so wrong. So wrong. So many people suffering. Ticks me off. Okay, moving on. UFO sighting in Corpus Christi, Texas. This occurred September 29, 2017. In brief, they state, was in a school bus when objects suddenly appeared and hovered one to two feet from me. In more detail, was waiting for a student in the school bus when objects suddenly appeared in front of windshield. It hovered directly in front of me within one to two feet distance. The object did not like being filmed as it started to dart around erratically to avoid being filmed. Okay. I took the video on an S7 Edge Samsung film. The video quality is good on the cell, yet the object still appears blurry, even at close range. As soon as I quit recording it, it started hovering in front of me again. During this time, the loading lights on the school bus were activated. It seemed to be flashing back the amber lights, but the sequence was different from the bus. As soon as the red lights were activated, the object flashed back only once and zipped up incredibly fast almost as it did not like the red lights or possibly offended by it. The object was two to three inches. Okay. My initial thoughts and my attendance was that it was a bug of some sort. <laughs> but slowing down the video, it appears saucer oval shaped with maybe an antenna, but no visible wings on it as if it was a bug. Hmm. Very cool. The next UFO sighting happened in Demopolis, Alabama. This occurred October 6, 2017. In early October, I went outside of my house around 7 and seen a light moving in odd formations, changing sizes. I called my wife and daughter to come see the object, and 30 minutes after, two fighter jets and a helicopter showed up. Oh, yeah, that's not our government. Oh, gosh, okay. In more detail, they say it was early October, about 7 to 7, 15 p.m. I went outside to smoke. You guys see the pattern? A lot of people walking their pets, hiking, or going for a cigarette. They all see these things. <laughs> Setting on my carport, I seen a light shoot across the sky, light a shooting star. Then it stopped in a sudden manner. I noticed it was changing color and size for a few minutes in the same place, so I called my wife and daughter to come look at what I was seeing, just to make sure they could see it as well. It stayed stationary for maybe 10 to 12 minutes and shot across the sky, stopped for less than 30 seconds, and went back to the same location as before very fast. We observed the object for a few more minutes, and we heard a jet coming flying over our house. Come to find out, it was two jets, and a few seconds behind them, a helicopter. The jets flew straight at the orb and both banked in different directions opposite of one another to appear to kind of surround the orb and flew back and forth while the helicopter was on its way. Right before the helicopter got close to it, 
it shoots straight up in the sky, probably eight to ten times faster than anything I have ever seen. And just like that, boom, it was gone. <laughs> the next UFO sighting occurred in Astacadero, well, Astacadero, Astacadero, California. <laughs> it was occurred December 18, 2017 odd rounded object that seemed to have rounded areas on it that grew and shrank then larger again in my parking area in more detail they say in my parking area i noticed something moving in the sky it was rounded but stretched out a little its sides seemed to grow in areas then shrink and grew again it moved three times the speed of small aircraft which i see around every day i noticed it had no wings or a rotor above it it made no sound at all. It moved in a different direction, northwest. I felt weird. Odd inside, while watching it move away. No wings or sound made me keep looking until it was out of sight. I'm 68 years old, and I have been in airplanes, but since a young boy. Okay, never seen anything close to this. I don't edit the stuff, I just read it. If it's chopped up, it's chopped up. The next UFO sighting. This happened in an easy to pronounce name. <laughs> Black Triangle sighting in San Diego, California. This is a UFO blast from the past. I like these because they get more into details. And it's something that bugs a person for a long time before they finally send in a report. This occurred December 27th of 1997. They briefly describe it as a V-shaped craft flew directly overhead, heading west. Clear night, street lights reflected off ship. Six round red rear taillights. Top gun Merrimer due east of sighting at rears. G-H-T-S at rears. In more detail, they state, I was taking my Westie for a walk when I saw a shooting star before I closed the door. A crystal clear night. I walked around the block when my dog stopped, so I thought I will look up to see if I see another shooting star. I looked overhead, and there it was. A football field in length and width. It was silent, no exhaust, and was visible due to the reflection of the yellowish street lights. This triangle-shaped craft had six circular red lights at its rear. As I looked up and this ship blotted out the whole sky, I realized I was just left of center. As it headed west to the Pacific, I looked to my right to see its length, which was visible because of the lights on the Torrey Pines Road. This whole event lasted only 10 or so seconds. I lost sight of it when it was blotted out by buildings. I felt great. I had been listening to Coast to Coast Art Bell since 92 and was aware of V-shaped craft. Due east about three miles is Miramar Naval Air Station runway. The Phoenix Lights episode took place six months later. Is it one of ours? Do -do -do -do. All right, next one. <laughs> UFO sighting, Black Triangle sighting in Norwalk, Norwalk California. <laughs> This occurred December 20th, 2017, a flying triangle with red lights and sudden changes in movement. In more detail, they say, I was sitting down watching a movie on my computer at my desk. There's a couple light poles outside my window that I'm used to, but something was different this time. As I glanced past my monitor, I saw what looked like two red lights stuck together. The object wasn't moving at all until I could see that it was actually rotating and resembled a 3D triangle. I quickly went outside to film, get a better view. The object had a bright flashlight that only turned on for a couple of seconds. Then all of a sudden, a bunch of smaller white orbs flew out of the object and started to disperse around the area. Never witnessed anything like this before, so I'm shaken up at this point. It flew out of my view when I saw it again a few minutes later in the same spot. It was just hovering and not moving until it finally started traveling east out of my view. I mistakenly didn't save the footage where the light orbs flew out, but I got a bit. Hopefully, more people saw this as well. The next UFO sighting? 
UFO sighting in Ashland, Oregon, December 7th, 2017. It hovered, then started accelerating for a second, then just kept flying. In more detail, they say, I was unable to fully hear the sound of it before it passed over, but before that, I saw it maybe 40 to 45 degrees above the horizon, hovering. Then, one and a half-ish minutes later, it started moving. I saw it for maybe two more minutes before it passed over into the mountain area. I was in a Toyota Land Cruiser from the 70s, diesel, so I didn't get the correct sound. All right, to start off our new year right with some more inspirational stories of miracles and angels, we're going to begin in sharing some of these stories. This story is entitled, Amazed. When I was younger, I was going through a lot of things that a young 16-year-old girl shouldn't have to endure. You can try to imagine. Well, my mother and I were arguing a lot, and she stayed very angry because she was going through things of her own. She took it out on me and my little brother. I went to sleep that night after crying and praying to God. I prayed for hours until I drifted off to sleep. I woke up in the middle of the night to a bright light in my doorway. It was so bright that I had to squint my eyes to look at this beautiful light. Then a very tall, what appeared to be a man, walked out of the light to the edge of my bed, walked to where I was lying, kneeled down over me. He spoke my name and put his hand on my arm and started to whisper something in my ear. I could not understand what he was trying to tell me because as soon as he touched my arm, I started feeling really tired and fell back to sleep. He made me feel so much comfort. I still think of my angel to this day. That's a nice one. This next one is called The Presence. Not long ago, my father was diagnosed with stage 4 bladder cancer and not given much hope for survival past the Christmas season. Although the odds were devastatingly against him, he chose to go through a round of chemo to take some comfort in the idea that he did give the whole attempt to be cured a credible shot. Although God has other plans, I take comfort in my faith that he will be taken care of by Christ and the angels themselves. I was up at the wee hours of morning after not being able to sleep in my unending thoughts and prayers. I stood in my driveway in the moonlight and meditated with chills indicating the presence of the Holy Spirit. As I prayed, my cat kept clawing and biting my ankles. I then telepathically said, Jesus, can you please stop this annoying cat from biting my ankles while I'm trying to talk to you? At that very second, the cat refrained and sat up in a calm state, although he still followed me as I strolled about the driveway. Coincidence? Well, that's cool. This next one is called Angel in the Navy. In 1974, while stationed in Pearl Harbor, someone I had been drinking with spiked my wine with LSD. Oh, gosh. He did so with several others. We all went back to the base barracks, and some of the guys were going crazy. I prayed for help. A sailor opened his door and asked what was wrong. I told him. He asked me to get everyone and bring them to his room. I did. He asked if we believed in God. We all shared our experiences about God, that is, when I noticed I was sober. It was way too soon for LSD to be out of my system because it's an 18-hour experience. It had only been a few hours since our drinks had been spiked. The next day, I went to the room to thank the guy. When I went to the room, no one had been in that room for months. I was in communications, and there had been no ship movements. No one but the guys who had their drinks spiked remembers the man. It has been a mystery for nearly 40 years. There can be only one explanation. That sailor was either a ghost or an angel. Because of how he spoke of God, I believe he was an angel. Wow. My father came to me. 
My father passed away on the 1st of February 2012, and soon afterwards I had a dream that my father was waiting for me. But the closer I came to him, the further he moved away. He was standing at the top of a flight of stairs, which was very high. I could not get to him. As if he was watching over me, then a few nights ago, he appeared to my mom's neighbor, who was sleeping in mom's bed, as an angel. He just stood there and then disappeared, after she told him my mom is being taken care of by me, and she is fine. I miss him so much. The next story, Moonville, Ohio Angels. Moonville, Ohio is an old town that was overtaken by a plague. Almost everyone died. All that is left of the town is a tunnel. We went through the tunnel, and three of my grandsons climbed the hill to the top. There was a thin beam of light that looked like a sword. It was right in front of us. I couldn't see when I looked up to take the picture. The light was so bright. I took the picture anyway. When we got back to our cabin, I looked to the picture. There was a bubble in the middle of the thin beam of light. It was right in front of my grandson, Jordan. Jordan lost his father at nine months old. He was killed by a train. When I blew up the picture, there were angels as plain as day looking right at Jordan. My five-year-old granddaughter, Mason, said, I told you, Mommy, I saw an angel. I have the picture of the angels in the bubble. I want to share this with the world. What a blessing that we saw this at Moonville that day. The next story is called Angelic Words. My angel spoke to me once and told me his name. It happened when I came back from shopping. My mom told me to ask who my angel was. I was barely forming the question when he told me. One name, Gabriel. Afterwards, I could feel him standing near me. A soft light with golden swirls. The next story is called Digital Angel. Well, I had two angels once when I was ten, and I heard someone whisper my name. But no one was there, and my angel communicates with me by using digits on the clock. Last night, I was on my iPod and randomly felt someone lightly squeeze or touch my arm. I was confused at first and started looking around, but no one was there. So I looked at the time. It was 2.23. I just missed 2.22, one of the numbers when they let me know they're there. I was amazed. The next story is called Bus Stop Angel. I'd had a difficult two years full of losses and sadness and major changes. I had been recently diagnosed with depression, and I had some very strange experiences and some moments of pure bliss. One day I was sitting at the bus stop, and something that I couldn't see sat next to me. Something so beautiful that I felt pressure and tingling all along that side. A very spiritual friend said, It was evil, but I didn't feel it as evil. I think so it was an angel that wants to guide me and has done just that. Through a chance encounter with a friend of a friend who has set me on the right path for healing, all my hurt and resolving my depression and more. And this friend of a friend is like an angel here on earth for me. This next one is called Angel Helps Me Save My Son's Life. My son called me because he wanted to die. But after trying to convince him that I should fly there to help with the children, he hung up. My seven-year-old grandson called me crying and said, Please, Grandma, come. I called the airlines and had to be at the airport for the last 9 p.m. commuter plane. The terminal was under construction, so I was left at a shuttle site in the parking lot in pouring rain. It was 8.45 p.m. I had never used this airport, so I was terrified and began crying. A black woman appeared from the black night and said, Why are you crying? I don't know where to board the plane, I said. She asked for the flight information, then said, Don't worry, I'll get you there. As the shuttle showed up, she got me to the terminal, and I was the last to board. I stayed up all night with my son. Then I called the suicide line at 4 a.m., convincing him to talk with a psychiatrist. A friend came by, went to talk with him, and came out with a loaded gun and sleeping pills. He talked into giving it up. An angel saved him. Beautiful. 
Well, I have to say to you guys, thank you so much once again for listening to UFO Headline News with me, Heidi Hollis. Be sure to check out ufoheadlinenews.com every single day and go to heidihollis.com. There you will find and be able to connect with my other shows that I do called The Outlander and I also co-host on The Kevin Cook Show. The Outlander comes on every Friday and Kevin Cook Show every Tuesday. Both shows are at 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central. And catch my paranormal comic strip that is called The Outlanders at theoutlanderscomic.com. Everything I mentioned to you here could be found at HeidiHollis.com or InceptionRadioNetwork.com. And I want to invite you, if you've ever experienced anything out of the ordinary and want some level-headed advice, or if you've seen a UFO, feel free to write me through my main site, HeidiHollis.com, or my email, DustOutlander at gmail.com. Remember always to keep an open mind so you can stay informed and inspired. 